In the summer of 1683, a massive army stands at the gates of Vienna, laying siege to the city. The Ottoman Empire has its foot on the neck of the mighty Habsburg Empire and is preparing to deal the killing blow. Over a century ago, in 1529, the Habsburgs were in the same position, but managed to defeat the advancing Ottomans. This time, the Ottomans are not going to be defeated as easily. It will take a miracle for the Habsburgs to defeat the Ottomans a second time. On today's episode of Bet You Didn't Know History, we're looking at the Siege of Vienna. In the late 17th century, the Ottoman Empire controls much of Egypt and the coast of North Africa, along with much of what is now the Middle East. Looking north, the Ottomans control pieces of the Caucasus, along with parts of what is now Ukraine. Towards the west, Greece and virtually all of the Balkans are subjects of the Ottoman Empire. All this territory makes the Ottoman Empire the largest and one of the most powerful empires. But the Ottomans are not yet satisfied. Allying themselves with the Hungarians, the Ottoman Empire declares war on the Habsburg Empire on January 2, 1683. An army begins the march toward the Habsburg capital in Vienna. They will not arrive until the beginning of summer. Meanwhile, the Habsburgs prepare themselves for war, strengthening defenses in and around Vienna. They also begin searching for allies. Their longtime adversaries, the French, are not interested, despite Pope Innocent XI's pleas to help their fellow Catholics and stop the advance of Islam. The Habsburg Emperor Leopold I reaches out to the Polish for help. Polish King John III Sobieski, despite being a fan of the French, signs a treaty with the Habsburgs. The treaty outlines that if either capital is attacked, the other will have to defend it. When the Ottomans finally arrive, their massive army of around 150,000 men quickly overpower the outer Habsburg defenses and push closer and closer to Vienna. On July 7th, in the face of the swiftly advancing Ottoman army, Emperor Leopold I and tens of thousands of citizens flee Vienna. Leopold I takes refuge in Germany and tries to gain military support to push back the Ottomans. The Ottomans reach Vienna in mid-July. The defenders are given one last chance to surrender, become subjects of the Ottoman Empire, and convert to Islam. They refuse. On July 17th, Ottoman artillery opens fire, and the siege begins. The Habsburgs are severely outnumbered with only about 10,000 soldiers and thousands of untrained militiamen. However, the long march to Vienna prevented the Ottomans from bringing heavy artillery. Instead, they brought medium-sized artillery, which will not be effective at penetrating the thick walls surrounding Vienna. The Ottomans begin building a series of trenches and ditches to approach the city. This way, they will be safe from Habsburg artillery. Once close enough, the Ottomans will construct artillery positions off the trenches to batter Vienna's walls. At this range, the medium-sized artillery will be more effective at destroying them. Each day, the Ottomans come closer to capturing Vienna. While some reinforcements have arrived from Bavaria, the defenders of Vienna are still waiting for John III Sobieski. After hearing of the attack, Sobieski had begun rallying his army. However, Sobieski does not begin marching toward Vienna until mid-August. But will he get there in time, or will Vienna be lost? Vienna's defenders continue fighting hard. Soon, all men in the city are required to join the fight. Ottoman troops continue pushing, destroying Habsburg artillery batteries. Eventually, they manage to gain control of Vienna's outer walls. The defenders begin preparing to fight within the city constructing roadblocks and digging ditches. However, it is now September and only a few thousand defenders are remaining. The rest have perished. Finally, Sobieski's army arrives near Vienna. Together, the combined force of Poles, Habsburgs, and Germans from various kingdoms numbers 80,000. The combined army makes camp in the Vienna woods. The next morning, the army gathers and charges the Ottoman fortifications. After almost half a day of brutal fighting, the Ottomans are pushed back to their camp between the Vienna woods and the city. 
the Polish Habsburg German army then regroups. Together, they rush forward into the Ottoman camp. Watching the battle unfold, the defenders of Vienna rally their last bits of strength and attack. The Ottomans are now stuck between the defenders of Vienna and the attacking army. That night, the Ottomans flee. Vienna has been saved. The Polish army celebrates the victory and loots the Ottoman camp. The Habsburgs stand guard, still refusing to believe that they have won. The fleeing Ottomans are eventually chased out of Habsburg lands and back into their territory. If the siege were to have succeeded, it could have led to the downfall of Europe as we know it. But the siege was a failure and will mark the downfall of the Ottoman Empire. From this point on, the empire will slowly shrink, losing much of its territory and power. The victorious Habsburg Empire, however, will continue to expand and gain power after the siege. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs>